Party. They are great partners in helping us elect conservative-minded Republicans uh, in Greene County. So thank you to Chairman Nick Passero and to Mike and Patty Patino. Where are you guys? Thank you so much for everything you do for us. I want to uh, uh, please and hold your applause to the end if you would. Um, we got our Vice Chairman in Wyndham Town, Chairman Tom Hoyt here, our Executive Committee Secretary, Elisa Jarvis, our Treasurer, Willis Vermilia, State Committeeman, Joe Burke. Please, a uh, round of applause for those guys. Uh, some of our town chairs that I've, I've seen, and if I miss anyone, just stand up and yell at me because I'm used to that at home. No, I'm just kidding, honey. Where are you? Um, from uh, Carol, we have Carol Engelman. Uh, from Gatsville, Matt Rivera. From Durham, Terry Ward. Uh, from New Baltimore, Gene, Gene Horn. So, thank you guys for being here. Uh, your reward is I do have petitions for all of our committeemen, so please, please see me uh, before you leave so we can get our petitions out on the street and start getting them circulated. Um, Countywide officials uh, uh, who will not, who aren't speaking um, today, but are here and we want to recognize our great sheriff, Greg Sealy. Greg, right. well, thank you. And our county clerk, Mike Clay. No one's around here someplace. And one of our county coroners who does not want to come and visit any of you, Russ Davis. From the county legislature, we have uh, Casco legislator Linda Overbaugh. Linda, thank you. From Athens, we have Gene Hatton. Gene, good to see you. And uh, from Greenville's very own Kevin Lewis. Kevin, thank you for letting us come to Greenville here. All right, uh, we do have one very special lady here as a guest today. Um, she needs to get going and uh, set up for her son's graduation party that's later this afternoon. Uh, but she also happens to be here on her anniversary. Um, now, I don't know how happy she is with her husband that uh, for their anniversary they came to the Green County Republican picnic. <laughs> Uh, but they are here, and I'd like to ask Joelle Amador if she would come up, please. <laughs> From Green County Republicans, happy anniversary to you. Okay, uh, now we have some, some good speakers for you. They're, they're all going to be pretty brief, but, but important messages to share. Uh, and I want to start with the guy who's running the show at the top level uh, for our candidate for governor. Uh, we have a great, great ticket, statewide ticket, one of the best statewide tickets we've had in a long time. Uh, I know you haven't had a chance to really get to know our candidate for governor, Rob Astorino, yet, but you are going to be blown away when you meet this guy. He will be in Greene County. He will be all over the state. Uh, but today we're going to hear from his campaign manager, Mike Waller. Mike, would you come on up and say a few words on behalf of our state office? Now, Brent said to keep it brief, so thank you very much. <laughs> uh, it's great to be here in Greene County. I know Rob is sorry that he couldn't be here today. He's down in New York City marching in a few parades, uh, and, and Chris is out in the southern tier uh, today. Uh, so they're sorry they couldn't be here, so instead you got me. Um, I've had the great pleasure in the last four years. Uh, I was working with the State Republican Party. I got to know Brent. Uh, and you have a, a terrific chairman here. So I just want to take the time to say thank you to Brent for everything that you do on behalf of the party. Now, folks, I, I know a lot of you have, uh, have lives. I unfortunately don't right now. <laughs> So last night I spent my night uh, on Twitter watching the Working Families Party Convention. And it was uh, quite entertaining. And I know we have a tracker, so how you doing? Um, it was quite entertaining to watch. Governor Cuomo 
bribed and intimidated his way onto the working family's party line. He threatened people, he cajoled people, and now he's come out and said we need a Democrat majority in the state Senate, we need to raise minimum wage to $13, we need to do all of these progressive ideas and get them passed in the new uh, session come 2015. And what he did last night was turn the keys of New York State and our upstate economy in the Hudson Valley and Long Island over to the mayor of New York City. He cut a deal with Bill de Blasio. And so this year, as Brent pointed out, we have a strong ticket. We have a ticket with Rob Astorino, Chris Moss, John Cahill, and Bob Antonacci. You'll hear from John shortly. But all four of these candidates are people who will stand up for the people of New York State, stand up for all of you here, and everyone that's not, Republicans, Democrats, Independents, blanks, it doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, what we're all looking for in New York State is an opportunity. We all want a good paying job, a good education for our kids, and we want to be able to stay here in New York. Unfortunately, right now, under this governor, we are dead last 50th in every category. We have the highest taxes in the nation. We've lost the most people over the last four years than any other state. 400,000 of our fellow New Yorkers have left. We have the highest electric uh, rates in the country. Excuse me. Are you, we have are you in the worst economic the outlook like the, in America. And I saw, I saw the That's not the New York that we all grew up in. That's not the New York that we want to raise our families in. That's not the New York that we want to stay in. Okay, I'll nice meet you. Okay. But first and foremost, we're all here because we care about this right. state. We care about the future of our country and the future for our children and our grandchildren. And so all of us together this year are going to work to ensure that Rob Astorino what is your name? and Chris Moss and John Cahill and Bob Antonacci are elected, not because they are just these wonderful people that we absolutely have to elect, which they are, <laughs> but it's because... We, as New Yorkers, care about our future, and we have to turn the course of this state around and put New York back in the winning column. Now, just so everybody understands, you know, you'll hear your neighbor say, ah, my vote doesn't count, the Democrats control the state. Understand this, in a gubernatorial election, 44 plus percent of the vote comes out of upstate New York. That means if everybody in Greene County shows up, we will win this election. George Amador will be elected your next state senator. Peter Lopez will be returned to the assembly. And let me tell you something. Pete Lopez has been one of the best representatives we've had in Albany. He has stood up for the people of Green County. He has stood up for New Yorkers against the guy and Shelly Silver, who is one of the most despicable people we've ever had in, in elected office. He has run this state into the ground over the last 20 years in his speakership. And we will ensure that he has new Republican members to join him in the Assembly come January so that the Assembly of Republicans can uphold Governor Astorino's veto every time. And I would also be remiss if I didn't talk about your great congressman, Chris Gibson. I can truly say there is no finer representatives in the House of Representatives than Chris Gibson. This, this is a man of courage and integrity and honesty. And what the people of Greene County will say this year is that that congressional district and this state are not for sale. And no one can just move in and purchase a congressional district because they have the resources to do so. And so all of you I know will join me in ensuring that Chris Gibson, George Amador, 
and Peter Lopez are elected come this November, and we will make sure that Rob Astorino, John Cahill, Chris Moss, and Bob Antonacci join us. So I thank you all for coming out on a Sunday, spending your time and your resources to help get our, our candidates elected. And we will make sure that we do everything in our power not to let you down this November. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, our next speaker, well, let me start with this. Uh, probably not a big surprise to most of you, but there's a lot wrong in Albany. Um, and, I, you know, we keep hearing uh, about all these guys doing just ridiculously horrible things. Uh, fortunately for us, most of them are Democrats from New York City. Uh, but nobody holds them accountable, um, or not to the level they should. And where that starts is with an attorney general of the state of New York uh, who will hold people accountable and, and who will clean up Albany. We have a great candidate that's going to do that who's with us today, our attorney general candidate, John Cahill. John? It's a huge state, and uh, as uh, Mike was saying, we have a great ticket, and we try to cover the state as best we can to get the message out, and sometimes we draw straws. I guess I got the long straw today by being here to myself. Rob is down in New York City, and Chris on the Southern Tier, but I can't think of a more wonderful place to be on a Sunday afternoon, so it's great to be with you here today. And so yes, I'm running for Attorney General. As some of you may know, I spent 12 years in the Governor Pataki's administration as the EC Commission as the Chief of Staff. And the reason I'm running now, and the chairman you know, mentioned it, is what's going on in Albany. I mean, yesterday really epitomizes everything that is wrong with Albany. Yesterday afternoon, I had the honor of being uh, nominated by the Conservative Party down in New York City uh, to have that line to run on, which I'm extraordinarily proud. A party like our party that values its principles, values its message, and doesn't sell out for sake of power. Well, we saw it this weekend up in Albany with the Working Family Party gives you a clear indication as to where they want to take this state. They want to take this state in a direction that will certainly lead to the further demise of this once great state. Further empowered by, not frankly even Democrats, we're talking about the far left agenda of American politics. And who's leading that effort on a statewide basis? It's the guy who swore in Bill de Blasio the Attorney General, Eric Schneider. Instead of standing up there and saying backroom deals are not going to be committed, that are going to destroy the integrity of our government, he's out there being complicit in these backroom deals, calling for them just a, a tremendous exercise in democracy, I think is what the term that he used last night. If that's not enough to outrage each and every one of New Yorkers, well, then frankly, we don't have a hope in this state. Because I'm outraged by it. I think all of us in this room are outraged by what happened this weekend. So this is going to be the year we take back New York State. We're going to take it back because we have a great leader at the top of the tip, tick in Rob Astorino. Rob has been my county executive for the last five years. He's done an absolutely remarkable job in holding down taxes, holding people account. He's once again transformed Westchester County. We have Chris Moss, who's a wonderful leader, the guy who understands all of our constitutional rights are important, including our right on the Second Amendment. We have Bob Antonucci, who's probably the most well-qualified individual ever to run for control. And thankfully, here in Free County, we get to lunch around with all these great guys like Congressman Gibson and George Avador and Peter Lopez, so we get the benefit here in Green County because you guys have such wonderful representatives on the ticket. But it is going to take an all-out effort. There's no question that there are more Democrats in this state than Republicans. But this year, we're more highly motivated. We're taking back my, this state that I love, that I worked with 12 years. I have my two campaign managers here today, my daughters, right? They're my advance team for the next uh, six months, them and my two sons. But it really is about their future. How do you sit down with your son or your daughter who just graduated from college and say, you know what, you should stay here in New York? Right now, that's a pretty hard argument to make because the opportunities in Texas or Florida, North Carolina, 
seems to be a lot more appealing than paying the highest taxes in the state and having a government that is not accountable. We're going to change this this year, all right? But 20 years ago, I was with Governor Pataki, and we changed the state in 1994. We took out an incumbent 12 years, and we helped change that state. What else happened in 1994? Rangers won the Stanley Cup, all right? All right? So this is the year Rangers won the Stanley Cup, and the Republicans take back Albany with the help of everybody in this room. Thank you for the help. Okay, uh, we're going to move back a little closer to home now that we've heard from our statewide representatives. Um, before we do that, I just want to encourage all of you, uh, and, and I need to point out Alan Austin over here, who's one of our vice chairs. Um, Alan, Alan has put together a social media program for us and the Green County Republican Party. Uh, we are up on Facebook, we are up on Twitter. Uh, Alan and I work on it. Uh, most of the time he just goes ahead and does things, great things on his own. Uh, he's doing a tremendous job, so please, please, please join us. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on, on Twitter, okay? You can get to the line. I won't give you all the things, but just go to greennygop.org. Green That's our website, and you can get links uh, to our, our Twitter and to our Facebook. So please join us and follow us. Because uh, you'll hear all about our statewide guys and a lot that's going on locally. All right, as I said, closer to home, um, we have some local elections here in the county. Uh, and we're going to start uh, four years ago, we elected uh, a new county treasurer in Peter Marcoux. Peter's been doing a tremendous job watching your money in Catskill. Uh, so, Peter, would you please come up and say a few words? See, Brad told everybody else to be short and sweet. He gave me two minutes. <laughs> so here's your two minutes. While Washington spirals out of control, while New York State spirals out of control, you should know that Greene County is financially stable. We're not flush. We're not flush, but we're financially stable and probably better off than a number of other counties. Because you know what? It's all about your money. From the first day I took office, it was always your money. Whether it's federal money, it's yours. If it's state money, it's yours. If it's real estate taxes, it's yours. If it's sales taxes, it's yours. If you buy a place at DMV, it's yours. And my responsibility is treasurer. My fiduciary responsibility is to represent all of the taxpayers of Green County. Next four years, we're going to be facing enormous challenges and opportunities. But you should know that since it's your money, you need to know where it goes. So before you leave, pick up one of these postcards. It gives you my email address. It gives you my web page address on the county. And within the next two to three years, every piece of financial information that you should have will be on that page. It's your responsibility to know where your money goes. It's my responsibility to make sure it's safe. Someone today asked me, where's our money? Today at one o'clock it was in a lockbox and it's safe. <laughs> the next four years, I will keep it just the same. I need your vote, and we need to come out strong for all Republican candidates in this next election. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as many of you know, we, we had a spirited contest uh, to choose a district attorney candidate here in Greene County. Uh, our great district attorney, Terry Wilhelm, last November, went on to become a county judge. Uh, what we did, we had two very qualified and capable individuals who, who were seeking the position, uh, and we have a great candidate who prevailed that will make, that will unite the Republican and conservative parties together, 
and will do a great job in protecting you in the interest of Greene County and the District Attorney's Office. Please welcome Joe Stanzione. Yeah. Thank you. When I have notes, it means it's going to be short. Uh, it is great to see that we have so much support here today. Uh, and I'm truly honored to have uh, your trust and support uh, for the job of district attorney. Now, Terry Wilhelm did a tremendous job for us, and I'm going to work really hard uh, to maintain the respect and integrity of the district attorney's office. Now, the job of district attorney is not about power and authority. It's about responsibility, integrity, and justice. And I will work with the uh, law enforcement agencies of Greene County to protect our citizens here in Greene County. I will also work to bring justice to victims of crimes by prosecuting criminals to the fullest extent of the law. That's a matter of responsibility for the district attorney's office. But I can't do that until I get there. And in order to get there, I need help from each and every one of you here today. And the best way you can help me is by spreading the word that I am truly committed to family, my profession, and to the safety of the citizens of Greene County. And that means all of the citizens of Greene County. And uh, I thank you for being there for me and for being here for all of our candidates and elected officials. Thank you. Thank you so uh, a long time ago, I had the privilege to meet, uh, in fact, I'll tell you how long it was, I had brown hair. Um, <laughs> You know, so it, it goes back a ways, uh, but I, I met a great uh, young man who came into the state senate to work for Charlie Cook, I believe it was at the time, uh, and I've seen him grow uh, into one of the finest representatives we have in the state of New York. Green County can be nothing but proud of our great assemblyman, Peter Lopez. And I, I do want to take a second too just to, to give a couple thank yous. And first, I want to say thank you to this committee. I don't think many people understand how much work is involved. This doesn't just happen. The, the communication, the outreach, the networking, the support, that all happens because of people who are passionate about their community who work at it. And they work at it when other people are out playing baseball games. They work at it when other people are out fishing. They work at it when folks are around their family barbecue. And it takes effort and perseverance. So I just want to say to our chairman and to our committee and everyone here who will act in that regard, thank you first for your passion and commitment. And I also need to thank my wife, Lisa, who has been unflagging in her support of, of this office and our work. Uh, we still do a thousand miles a week. And it's a privilege. And it's something we don't take for granted. Uh, I'm going to just stop for a second. And I, I do want to thank Evan, who is our special guest. Um, Evan is testimony to the intensity of the opposition that our candidates face. And I'm not doing this to be mean because we live in a free society and we are stronger with diversity. But also we have to realize that our opposition will be taking Evan's film and his notes. It will become sound bites, it will become uh, ideas for campaign, uh, they will become attack ads, and that's what's happening here today. And that's okay because it's important for us to realize as a community if we want our, our, our priority to be heard, we have to work. Because our opposition is as dedicated, or maybe, maybe even more dedicated by their presence today, to advancing their priorities and their causes. And that's okay. That's part of a free society. But I want you to, to know that, that as much as we come here, often we'll have people say, oh, we're going to hear another politician speak, and all these, oh my god, and glad we have the, the windows open so we can let all the hot air out. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I got it all again. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Am I wrong? Am I right? Hands, please. <laughs> all right. But beyond that, there's something happening here. And this is the pursuit of a free society. This is our engagement as individuals with civic responsibility to ensure our future. And because we're in a free society, we welcome and embrace differences of opinion, we welcome and embrace competition, we welcome and embrace what I use the term constructive tension, because that's who we are. We don't chafe at it, we don't mock our neighbors, we don't di di dis uh, dismiss them, we don't diminish them, we lift them up because we value what everyone has to say, because everyone in the room, 
And the people that Evan is representing as a group have value as well. But we have a priority and we have a mission. And I don't mean to single out. He's a fine young man. I met him. I hope he had a couple hamburgers because they're damn good. <laughs> and, and please make him feel at, at home as our neighbor, please. Okay? And please make him feel at home. Just to move on, we have great people who are helping us. Great people who want to serve from Senate to Congressional, to George Amador, Chris Gibson, uh, Joe, Peter, our local officials, our state candidates. These are people who are motivated not because they're out for, for self-aggrandizement. They're motivated because they care about you and their future. So that's what we're here for today. We're here for your future, for your children's future, for the future of Green County, for the future of the state of New York, for the future of America. And I would say God bless you for your conviction. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Senator. Uh, our next speaker uh, is our candidate for New York State Senate, George Amador. And I think we all agree that, that the, as I said before, a lot's going on in Albany that none of us like. Uh, and there's a way to change that. I'll tell you one thing. George Amador had been elected two years ago. The SAFE Act would not be law today. That's how important this is. That, that's how important those 18 votes are. Okay? We have, the Democrats want to tell you what to do in every aspect of your life. They want to tell you what you can eat, what size drink you can drink, you know, and take away all of your rights. Second Amendment rights, property rights. Um, this is who they are. Uh, not all upstate Democrats. I'm not talking about upstate Democrats. Uh, but there is a liberal base in New York City. And every time an upstate Democrat gets elected, all it does is empower leadership of the most liberal people uh, in this state, and that's the New York City Democrats. Uh, we need to put an end to that, and the way we're going to put an end to it here in Green County is we're going to elect George Amador to represent us in the state senate. George, please come on. Thank you. I will be brief. Here's why. And I, I do want to apologize. If I did not shake and greet each and every one of you, I'm sorry. But I do have to run. My darling wife, who we dishonored and gave a nice bouquet of flowers. It is our anniversary today. It is 24 years. And we're also celebrating. But we're also celebrating a graduation party, or having a graduation party at our home for my middle son who graduated college back in December. And here we are now, June, okay? So we, we do have to rush home so that we have a bunch of people coming. But look, how many of you of us are proud Americans? Huh? Are we proud Americans or what? Being a proud American means that we're proud of our rights, we're proud of our liberties, we're proud of our freedoms. Why should we have any one, one person, one group, one party, try to take away or limit or manage what they think our freedoms, our liberties, and all of our opportunities are and should be? You think that's right? No. You think it's right that a governor said, what he said about whether you're conservative or whether you are, uh, <clears throat> think that if you, if maybe you have a more pro-life or maybe you are a person who thinks a little different, believes in less taxes, that New York is not the place for you. You think that's right? No. 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 Do you think that it's right that we have representation in Albany that they're trying to have one party rule in Albany? And by the way, I think we did, we tried that about two years ago or so, maybe three years ago or so. I know it was 2000, no, four years ago, right? 2010? Yeah. And in 2010, what did we receive? And people, when you hear it, it's almost like astonishing, impossible. $14 billion more in taxes. But it was true. The New York City Democrat ultra-liberal control of the New York State Senate happened to have happened to go being controlled in the majority in 2010. And what did we get? We got the Gap Elimination Act, took funding away from our school districts. We had 
higher taxes. And we had a bunch of hypocrisy because they say one thing and they do another. Now, they may be nice people. And ladies and gentlemen, the opponent that I'm running against, which, by the way, let's say hi to her right now on the camera. Hi, Cecilia. Hi. She may be a very nice lady. But the fact of the matter is, is we all agree we're proud Americans, are we not? And we want great opportunities for our children, do we not? Yes. So let's all roll up our sleeves. Let's work hard. Let's get as many signatures as we can. Let's hit as many doors as we can. And let's take back New York State for all the candidates who are here today and who will be on the ballot in November. Because we are the home of the free and the land of the brave. So let's get brave this November and elect. elect Thank you all. Okay, and I can't think of a better way to wrap this up. Uh, we all should be so very proud because I believe we have the greatest congressman in Washington who truly, read. yes, you can clap for that. Absolutely. We have boots on the ground, working for you every day and every way. I'm excited to be with you today, and uh, like Peter Lopez, I, I just uh, I want to begin by expressing my gratitude. You know, what a huge difference that you have made and you continue to make. It was still in the winter when we had to uh, collect signatures for, uh, for our petitions. And you guys went out there, and under challenging circumstances, when all the signatures were tallied, we posted nearly twice as many as my opponent. And that's because of your hard work. God bless you, and thank you for that. I want you to know you are making this you bet. You are making this. You know, I know sometimes you may be frustrated with the pace, the pace of change, but let me share with you this, that each and every day when I'm down in Washington, I'm advancing, giving you a voice, pro-growth policies, fiscally responsible policies, policies that protect freedoms. And I want to tell you this, that at the end of this year, at the end of this year, the Congressional Budget Office assesses that we will have cut the annual deficit by two-thirds since my last year in the Army. And I know that we still have to keep working until we get back to a balanced budget. But you should know this, that if this would not have happened, and were it not for you, it just wouldn't have happened. It's not theoretical. All you have to do is look at the budget submissions of the President. Had he had a rubber stamp, had he had a rubber stamp, these deficits would still be over a trillion dollars. It's not because you sent me to Washington to fight hard so that future generations get the same choices and freedoms that we've had. So you do make a difference on that. And you know, when you take a look at uh, people asking me about, you know, what's the best re-election strategy? And okay, I haven't been doing this long, I guess three and a half years. But I'll tell you this, here's what I have learned. The best re-election strategy is service. It's working hard for you. It's following through on what you sent me to do. And that means those pro-growth policies. We want every American to have a shot at the American dream. And we need to continue to, to work to get back to a balanced budget. And when we get there, we need to stay there. And we talk about freedoms. You know, this is something that unites all of us. Regardless of party, is the belief, is the belief that we can live free. Something that was a radical concept in the 18th century in the era of divine right of kings and queens. You know, we've stepped forward and we said we can do this, we can live free. We set forward a government that limited the power and then dispersed it among states and among localities and individuals. And we brought forward a cherished Bill of Rights. That Bill of Rights, which was some of the most, at once, some of the most summoning words ever penned and also very real. Every single one of the amendments in the Bill of Rights came to us because of something that had visit, been, been visited upon us by King George. It's as true today as it was back then that we stand strong for our Bill of Rights. That's the representation we're bringing, and that's the best re-election strategy. I'll tell you this much right now. And then when you consider the challenge that we're up against, I mean, let's be candid, it's out in the news right now. You see that 
I'm up against a billionaire who moved into the district explicitly to run for Congress. And so you're wondering, you know, what's this message he has? What's this message of inspiration? Wait for it. Okay, he was at Delaware County last night, and he spoke among Democrats. And his big message of inspiration, mean-spirited personal attacks against me. And you're wondering, how did he get this information? Did we do like Evan? Evan's a tracker to the opposition. No, it's not. Because, you know, the leadership I'm bringing to Washington brings people together. I'm a proud Republican, but I'm an American first. And I'm looking to bring our country together. And I've got friends in Delaware County. I'm a Democrat. Democrat. You think, you know, maybe he thought he could say that and it wouldn't get back to me. It took about 12 hours to get back to me. And let me say this too. Um, certainly, Evan uh, strikes me as a fine young man. But let's be clear on what's going on here. This is part of the new reality in politics. You know, they show up and they take they're looking for five seconds, or whatever it may be, so that they can put millions of dollars on it and put it up on TV. That's part of the challenge here. But if anything, what we need to do is lean into this. We need to lean into this. And, you know, when we, when we recognize the challenge of what we're up against, and keep in mind, you know, uh, my opponent, you know, the intent of coming in here to buy an election, and he says there's too much money in politics, well, you know, look, I mean, the answer is yes, number one, but look, this is the guy who married a billionaire and now is spending millions to buy a seat, and, and not for nothing, but over about two or three weeks in October of 2012, this young man and his husband put a quarter million dollars to defeat George Amador. Now, keep in mind, at that time, he didn't even live in this district. He lived in another district, down south. But yet he put a quarter million dollars, he and his husband put a quarter million dollars to put it up on top of George's head so that he would be defeated. You think there's too much money in politics? Yeah. But here's what we got to do. Look, so what do we do then? We just lay down arms? Oh, heck no. Oh, heck no. Look. We've got a message for all people, for all time. And what we do is we commit ourselves to inspiring our neighbors. This is what's important. We respect the ballot box. We respect the ballot box. We know that we have to, in, we have to win the vote. And so each and every one of us, our mission now today is to go out and to spread that word, to bring people to us, letters to the editor, in your own words why it is that you're voting for our candidates. And inspire your family and friends. What it is that wants to bring them to the ballot box and to support us. When you put a bumper sticker on your car, this makes a real difference. You put a lawn sign out. This is another thing I learned. I really learned from just listening to folks. Because, you know, by the time October comes, they're about tired of all the negativity on the TV. And you ask them, why are you going to vote for somebody you're going to vote for? And what I hear often, well, you know, I wasn't very much interested in this election, but then I heard from my friend who told me about so-and-so. Or my family member who said, come out to the ballot box and support this individual. This is what really connects all of us. This is a as it was at the beginning, it's still true today. This is why there's hope. There's hope for us. Even in a two-to-one Democratic state, we've got strong candidates that are going to be out there advocating for us. We owe it to them to give it our all. And then that we would work every day. I'm proud to run on this ticket. I think we've got some wonderful souls. And together, we give hope to our country going forward. So let's get onward to victory. Let's do this together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. All right, just a few, uh, few last things as we wrap up our program. First and foremost, can we get a big hand for our band, Bobby Dalvin? Please, they do a great job for us over here. Uh, if, if they're not too tired uh, and can stand up, can our Athens cooks please stand up? We have some Koksaki people cooking now. 
So please thank all these guys who worked so hard at the barbecue. Great job, thank you so much. And uh, last uh, but certainly not least, uh, at least for me, is a special shout out and thank you to Pamela and my daughter Lauren, who uh, were here at 8.30 this morning with me, helping me put up signs, cover tables, and then came back and did 50-50. Ladies, thank you so much. With that, uh, we'll have our 50-50 drawing now, so if you can take out your ticket. It is. We took in a total of $426, so $213 to our lucky winner. Let's find someone that everyone likes, that uh, won't be angry when you don't pick your ticket. This looks like a fine young gentleman to do so. Thank you, sir.